excited to uh, have another great road challenge. I mean, it should be great, two six and one teams. Um, they've been incredible at home. And uh, I mean, you know, we know what uh, they've got playmakers in all three important levels on offense at quarterback, running back, and receiver. And then defensively, um, they've been incredible, um, especially in our league. They're leading just about every category that matters from third downs to to scoring defense to pass defense and total defense. They're number one in the country in tackles for loss, which is a, a calling card of Manny and his defenses. And, um, you know, just there's probably not a coach in college football that I respect more than Manny Diaz. So uh, don't like playing friends. Got a bunch of friends over there from Manny and <clears throat> Packy on the defensive side and obviously Johnny Brewer and uh, Gator Lamascus on the offensive side who are here with us and David Feely's the strength staff, uh, the strength coach there. Just great people. They do it for the right reasons. Manny's awesome at creating winning cultures and I think you've seen him do that there. And, you know, I'm definitely a better head coach for, for getting to work with him for a couple of years. So going to be a big challenge for us. We're excited about the opportunity. What is that challenge of coaching against a coach that wasn't really on the team? Yeah. You know, I mean, that stuff probably cancels out. I mean, um, for two years in practice, we went against each other, and, and now they're running a version of, of the same offense, and so they see it every day. And same part, you know, Scott Simons was here. And so, I mean, it's, it's one of those uh, – People want to make more of it, probably, as far as a chess match. I mean, I'm sure they'll have some wrinkles in what they do, and and we'll probably do the same. And um, but you know, nowadays you see film. You know, this Duke defense is a different defense than the ones that they had at Miami. Our offense is different than the ones we had at Miami. Now it's the same systems, the same um, overall philosophy. But you know, they've done a fantastic job of tailoring their defense to this group and their players, and they're a really smart group. And so. He's been able to do a lot. Him and Packy have been able to do a lot different things with them because of probably their ability to retain it and go execute it. Um, and obviously, you know, we're, we're a different offense year to year to some degree. So there'll be some small things, and I'm sure there'll be some stuff in games where you're like, ah, he got us or vice versa. But at the end of the day, it's about the players playing. And so um, whoever can prepare their guys the best and then their guys go out and execute it, usually it's what matters, but uh, it's a good storyline. You know, <clears throat> he can really throw the deep ball. He's got a big arm. Um, the deep ball, the RPO game, gets the ball out of his hands quick. He's big, so he can see up over the line. So, um, you know, what he does a great job of and, and they're doing on offense is getting the ball out. They're not taking sacks. Um, they're one of the best at doing that, and they're not turning the ball over. You know, I think what they've done as good as anybody in college football is play great team football. Like, they know how to their, – their objective is what all of ours is, is to win the game. And – Whatever that looks like week to week, you know, based on their opponent. Um, obviously, they're leaning on their defense at a high level, and they should. Their defense is, I mean, really, really good this year in all the major statistical categories and forcing turnovers. And then offensively, um, they're just kind of wearing on people throughout the course of a game. And they've been excellent in the second half of a lot of their games when it's time to win and finish. And so you just create a lot of confidence in your program the more you win. And so, look, they're 6-1. and one. Couldn't be playing with any more confidence. I'd like to think we're in the same boat, so should be good. What is it like defending a guy like Scott Thomas? And how much does it help, I guess, having the team without Andrew Sharp still in the offense? Yeah, I hope it'll help, you know, because there's some similarities there. I mean, Starr's been really good for him, and um, they've leaned on him to close out games um, really the last several weeks. And, um, you know, I think, again, what I know they're trying to do offensively as us is, is eliminate the negative plays, you know. And we're pretty good at negative plays on our defense in general. Like we had 11, I think, last week. But they're number one in the country defensively. And so, um, you know, even if you get the ball moving a little bit on somebody, as soon as you go backwards, it's now second and 13 or, or whatnot. It just it puts you in a tough spot. And then if you get the third down against uh, the Duke defense, it's, it's scary. And so I think it's the same with our defense. We've proven if we can get people in third and long, it's, it's so – a guy like Star for them gives them a chance to stay ahead of schedule and not be in third and long situations. And then when they get in the score zone, he's good at getting in the end zone. Uh, third and short, he's been really good. And then when they need to close out games, he's been really good. So um, we're going to have to gang tackle. One guy's not going to bring him down. Oh, man. I'm sure if I had time to sit here and think about it, you know, I appreciate, you know, Manny and I got to start going some version of against each other way back in 2010. Um, 
you know, I'll never forget. I was just a GA. He was the DC at Mississippi State, and we we had Cam Newton. We won the national title that year. We're playing at Mississippi State on a Thursday night, and uh, week two we beat them 17 to 14. They stuffed us pretty good, but we won. And my boys were born the next day, so that, I vividly remember that. Uh, and then to go, you know, he went to La Tech, and we went together again in Mississippi State. And then, you know, when I was leaving here to go be with him at Miami, um, just him and his wife. Uh, Stephanie and their kid, they're just a great family, but he he cares about his players like genuinely. You can tell um, by the way they play for him. Being in that culture, you know, I was with him in the COVID season, which was incredibly difficult. And the way he led our staff and our team, I thought was incredible. So I just appreciated uh, the relationship. I thought we made each other better. Uh, I learned a lot from him and hopefully helped out as well. And like I said, just tons of respect for him and how he does things. and. Um, he wins. That's what he does. He builds winning cultures, and things were trending in the right way at Miami. They made a decision, goes up to Penn State. All he does is have a, one of the best defenses in America again. Now he's at Duke. I'm not shocked at all that they're they're six and one and playing with the kind of confidence they are. So I don't know if there's one specific memory, but uh, I probably rambled on too much about just my admiration for him. Same question. Um, Jonathan's day to day. Um, so it's just kind of the protocol on that. Um, RJ, yeah, RJ is going to be out for the year. So um, kind of got the news we expected yesterday. So um, probably we'll have more detail of that in the coming weeks. But um, yeah, he's going to have to to have surgery, and he'll he'll be out for the rest of the season. Uh, there's, I think, yes, but there's some other things. So just kind of waiting on the the specifics. But yes, that is part of it. So you know, and I'll say this, like. By no means, it was a clean hit. There's nothing dirty on their part at all. But, you know, I think at the end of the year, like competition committee needs to look at college football a little bit because we make such a big deal, and rightfully so, on the targeting. Um, but I think any skill player would tell you they'd rather be hit chest up any day of the week other than defenseless at the knees. And guys are going to get hurt. You see it in the NFL. You see it in college. Um, and, and like I said, that tackle's legal, so there's nothing dirty about it. But I think we need to look at it because, you know, you're not allowed to hit a defenseless quarterback below the knees while he's in the pocket for obvious reasons. It, that is no different. As a matter of fact, that's probably worse. And so I just hate it for him. Um, you know, again, it's just unfortunate. So, uh, look, I'm for the game being physical. I'm not trying to, to take it a different direction. But, you know, we put a lot of emphasis on making the game safer. To me, that's a, a very uh, unsafe tackle when you can go at a guy's knees that hard defenseless. Um, I think that's why you see when that happens, a lot of times guys get hurt. But um, he'll, he'll push through it. He'll be better for it. And, you know, he'll make a full recovery. And, and I still think he has a huge future ahead of him. How is he, you know, how, how do you have to approach him to help guys through that kind of realization that, especially a player like him, who's used to having yeah. such an impact. Yeah. You know, I'm sure it's an emotional roller coaster right now. But. It, yeah, it is. I mean, I'm sure that it still hadn't sunk in for him. Um, but all our players. But, yeah, I mean, you know, if you're a player of his caliber that you're having a great year, um, you're obviously a huge part of what we do offensively. And, you know, you're probably going, well, at the end of the year, I'm going to find out what the scouts say. I mean, am I going or am I staying? Um, and so there's there's an adjustment there. And he'll have all the support uh, from us. And I know his family's fantastic. And, and he'll, he'll push through it. I mean, that's life, adversity and tough times and, and disappointing, unexpected things. I hate it for him. Uh, more than anything, because he was playing really well and he was working really hard. And um, but I know he'll come back stronger than ever, and I expect him to uh, be one of the biggest playmakers in the country his final year next year, and, and then go get drafted. But uh, it's a minor speed bump. Mentally, is probably going to be the biggest challenge. Though, to your point. And, and of course, he's still in that role. Do you think yeah. it's more of a strength for Hibner, or do you think Jeff Gaffney will take over? Yeah. Look, we 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 really believe in Matt Hibner. We don't have to change our offense. Um, and we brought in Matt to have one good depth, but also to play with both, which we had done a lot the last few weeks. I mean, Matt's playing over 50 snaps a game. Um, and, you know, if RJ wasn't here, we would be ecstatic, you know, to have been throwing the ball to Matt in the same situation. So um, I think about, you know, fall camp when our defense played man to man, we'd throw the same routes to Matt and he'd make the plays. Um, he's a really physical, willing blocker. So um, I think Matt will do just fine. Um, you know, obviously, we still have Jake Bailey, so those guys can work the slots. And then 
Um, you know, guys like Stone Eby's role may expand a little bit. Hopefully, we're getting Adam Moore back uh, shortly. He's had some nagging injuries. And then a guy like Trip Reardon, I mean, you, you just – next man's got to come up and the level of depth changes. You know, th same thing in the slot. I mean, Roderick Daniels has been playing a lot of um, – Running back, that'll continue, but he can also play receiver. I mean, Roger can do it all. So, uh, and then guys like Carter Campbell. So the depth has to raise its level, but in terms of the guy starting, I don't, I don't expect uh, a drop off. I think I heard Andrew Gibbs talk about how he felt like he's in the field. Yep. Well, no, first of all, it helps he gets to go against our defense in practice. You know, it's a fast defense. Uh, Coach Simons gives you a bunch of different looks and all that stuff. So that helps. I, I think just playing, like it's as boring as that sounds, as simple as it sounds, you know, just playing. I mean, I, I'm not thinking probably clear was that four or five starts this year. I mean, as he continues, each start, he just feels to get more comfortable. Like I thought at Louisville, he was incredibly comfortable. I thought he was just as uncomfortable just as comfortable against Stanford. As a matter of fact, you know, I was really upset about the interception. I thought that was the one bad decision. Looking back on it, it, it was just a miscommunication. You know, he thinks Matt's coming downhill as he throws it. Matt goes back. It's, it's more of a miscommunication than it was like a careless throw. So I just think he's, he's seeing it clearly because I think the game is slowing down for him. And then, you know, when you have success, that breeds confidence. And the more confident you are, you know, you're just going to play that way. And so um, what I've been proud of him is he stayed humble and he's just kept being the same person every week. You know, he's not gotten caught up in all the hype and all the stuff being said here or there. He's just uh, – he's coming, going to work, trusting his teammates. So I think he'll get better and better. Now, this week's a big challenge because they give you a variety of looks. And they're great at disguising the looks pre-snap, making everything look same, and then giving you something else. They're great at finding out your tendencies and um, – you know, having a plan to attack the things that either your offensive tendencies or your tendencies as a player. Like Manny's very cerebral, and that's that's what he does at a high level. So um, he's going to have to see the field well this week. And look, our games have gone a lot way the turnover margin, and, and so has Duke's. And I think that's going to be a big part of it. Talk more about how much having that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, his demeanor, his his uh, his calmness is is his biggest asset, really. You know, I mean, we've talked about it before, but I mean, he's the same dude every play. And whether something really bad happens to him, or you get on to him, or the crowd on the road's going crazy, like he just keeps playing. He, <laughs> it's like he doesn't know there's a scoreboard. It's like he doesn't know it's supposed to be hard what he's doing. Um, and so, you know, I think that's that's probably his biggest asset. Um, and then, yeah, I mean. It's really hard when you're playing quarterback to take your eyes off downfield and run around and then get your eyes back up and know where everybody is. Like if you drop back at quarterback and your eyes are downfield and you're feeling pressure, then you know where everybody is and, and you can get rid of the football even when you scramble with your eyes up. He has an incredible ability to like take off like he's going to run and then spit out and look up and know where everybody is and not throw the ball carelessly or like you know, the play that uh, Coach King's been working an individual that he's running left last week and spins around and throws it to LJ. Um, he hasn't been working that because it's, I mean, it's just to be able to feel that spin, find it, it's, it's, a, it's a special skill. So we're glad he's got it. You know, I think all year we've done a good job of creating pressure. Our sack numbers are a little bit down, you know, from where they were last year or whatever. I mean, I think there's a couple of reasons. One, playing a little bit better competition. Two, people are really locking in on those guys because they've seen now for a year they can get after the passer. But we've just been close. Like, I mean, probably the best play of the game last week was Elijah Roberts took their right tackle, picked him up, threw him in the quarterback's lap and hit the quarterback as he's throwing the ball. So we don't get a sack for that, but – that was the best play of the whole night from a pressure standpoint. So, but I think those guys collectively have done a really good job. Um, I think last game, you know, when you stop the run like we're doing, you get a chance to get people in obvious passing situations and when you get ahead. And they took great advantage of it. I mean, it was good to have a game with six sacks and I think 11 tackles for loss. But Jafari, career game, but him and Turbo and, and E Rob and Harrison, all those guys, Cam, we've known they've had it in them. So it was good to see him start being able to finish and get home.